Um, you're going to need some thicker wire like this. doesn't matter what color. And then you're going to need some thinner wire. That doesn't matter what color either. Um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide how big you want your teardrop to be. Because these are kind of like pendants. You know, you can make it earring size, which would be smaller like this. Um, or you can make bigger like a necklace size. For purposes of this tutorial, um, I'm going to make it sort of like in between because I don't want it to be so big that you can't see what I'm... I want it to be so big that I'm wasting a lot of materials but I don't want it to be so small you can't see what I'm doing either. Um, I'm just going to cut this to get it out of the way. The base of the earring is going to be made out of the thicker wire. Um, what you're going to do is kind of give it a shape to how you want it. Um, on the top of the earring, it's going to have a loop, so you're going to need to get these, like, pliers that are round. Um, I guess they're called round those pliers, I don't know. Um, but anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to make a loop at the top, like that. Oh no, this wire isn't... I don't know. It was bent funny on the packaging. Sorry about that. Um, it, this is pretty soft wire that I'm using. Copper wire is better, but I, all they had was aluminum. So I wanted to show you guys how to make this. So, um, yeah. So you're going to make one side like that. Then you're going to make your loop. Kind of doesn't have to be perfect to start because you can adjust it later. You can kind of have something kind of like this. Okay? Oh, I hope my battery lasts. Sorry. I'm, my camera runs on batteries. That's all I have. So you just kind of play with it until you get something like that. And then you're going to take these pliers and you're going to make what's going to be your top loop. And you want it to be fairly large, so you're going to use the back end of the pliers. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I get it maneuvered here. Um, kind of like that. Okay. And you're going to cut it. You want to leave a little bit at the bottom of the circle. You'll see why later. Um, but yeah. And then once you get that done, you can kind of cut this longer piece to be even with the bottom of the other wire. See how it's kind of like a total teardrop, like with a little funky top. This is going to be the loop where you attach your earring or your jump ring to make a pendant or whatever. Depends on what you're making it for. Okay. So you're going to kind of set this aside and we're going to play with it some more later. And you're going to take your smaller gauge wire. I've already opened this, but I don't took the paper off. And this is easier to do with, they have a thing, they have a tool actually for this. There are several ways to do it. I'm going to time lapse it out once I show you how to do it with the round pliers here because it takes a while to do. Um, yeah, okay. So your idea is to make the outside coil that this is going to go on. This is a part that's actually fairly difficult unless you, like, I don't know, have the tool, I guess, that you're supposed to be doing it with. But me, I pick a spot on on these that's a little bit larger than the thicker wire. And I just try to keep the wire at that spot. And I just hold it at that spot, like this. And I just keep twisting like that. And twist, and twist, and twist. See? Like, twisting. And... If you hold it and you keep twisting, it'll make a coil. 
you just kind of let it go off the end. It's a little curved because I was trying to check the length. You want to make sure you don't want it quite as long as your circle, but you want it close, like um, probably about two thirds of the way at least. You're going to stretch it out a little bit, so um, yeah. You just go till you get the right length. Whatever you think is right is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yeah. Okay. You want to leave some extra wire. I don't have that much left, but you want to leave. Uh, I'd say six inches would be enough, just to be on the safe side. Anyways, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab both ends and you're gonna pull gently to stretch it out. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it onto your teardrop or whatever shape you can make circle, whatever you want. It's perfectly fine. You have creative licenses to do whatever. Once you get it on there, you're going to stretch it out a little bit more. Try to keep the stretching uniform. You don't want the coil to be like really tight on one side and like like super loose on another. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it like semi-uniform. If you pull it too far to spot, just you know, push it back together. It's not ideal at all. Um, okay, just kind of work. Just kind of work with it so you get it how it's semi-uniform. Um, on this top side, what you're going to do is you kind of want to shove the, um, top of that in there. Look at that. Um, let's see here. You're going to use the small wire to hold the top of the teardrop together. Um, try to do this without squashing your coil that you've made. That's the last thing you want to do. It's not good. You'll mess it up. Just kind of wrap it and keep it in like a coil. Okay. I've got it coiled around there. Alright. And you're going to have to take the top of the other side of the coil. You're going to wrap that around the top as well. So you've got the tops of the coil on both sides. You can use your pliers later on. But for right now, just get it to where, you know, it's stuck on there, you know, like that. And then you can even these out. I mean, like, again, I said they don't have to be perfect. You want them really close to perfect, but, like, I mean, for something like this, y you know, it's not going to be, no matter what you do, you're not going to get them, like, evenly spaced, all of them. So just get them as good as you can. This is your last chance to kind of make sure the shape is what you want it. I'm just kind of going with a standard teardrop because that seems to be like the norm, I guess, for these. So, yeah. Just going to do that. Okay, what you're going to use to make the pretty part is embroidery floss. You're not going to use it in six strands. You're going to use one at a time. Okay, I've got my string um, untangled, so okay, let's see here. What you're going to do is tie it to the top. Alrighty. You just wrap it around the top coil. Ah. A couple times, kind of up a little and then back down. Make sure it's nice and secure. Then you tie it onto itself. And you just use a regular knot. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just 
make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, and to wrap it, this is what you're going to do. I'm going to kind of move the camera up a little. Let's see if you can see this. Okay, you're going to bring it down towards the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, just somewhere in the center, and then you're going to bring it up. You put it on the first loop at the top. Then you bring, when you bring it back down, you move it one to the opposite side of the side you're working on. So if you're working on this side over here, you're going to pull it to the opposite side of the center string on this side over here. Um, so it's my right and left, and I'm sure it's your left and right because I think my camera makes everything backwards. So, and you just, then you bring it to the next one. And you bring it. And you just keep going all the way around. I'm not sure if you can kind of see. It's really hard to hold it like this. But you just keep going. I'm going to bring it closer to me so I can work on it easy. It looks like I didn't make my thread long enough. So, I'll show you what to do if that happens. If that happens, you don't have to go all the way around. You can just stop wherever, you know. And then, what you do is you bring it back down to the center. Or back up. Ah! Back up to the center, up here. And you just wrap it around the top. It's a good thing, I guess, that that happens. I can show you what to do. But you wrap it around just as much as you need to, and then you just tie it off with your original starting thread. Alrighty. I have to bring it down here to tie it. So that's the first one. Don't worry about those little baby threads. They'll, they can stay up there. Alright, here's my pink. I'm just going to go ahead and move to the pink. Tying my pink on at the top. But anyways, again, you start by bringing it directly down to the center. And this time I'm going to go and I'm going to turn it so that I'm wrapping it on the opposite side. Alright. I still want to start over here. But I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to wrap it on the opposite side. I'm going to turn it around because it's hard for me to work with my left hand. But you would turn it around once you get it started. Don't turn it around when you start because you want the initial starting thread on the back. This one actually turned out really cute because you have like four, like, I don't know, colors, I guess. Anyways, with these baby strings, what you're going to do is you're going to take them at the top. I call them baby strings because they're kind of like baby hairs. And you wrap them around the top coil. Alright, so then you take this top piece that you had left that was your coil. And then instead of coiling it from the bottom, from the bottom to the top, you coil it from the top to the bottom, and you just coil it right over those baby strings. It's going to kind of hold them in place a little bit. Then you're going to take some pliers and kind of squash it down a little bit, like that. 